You're a wonderful sight, those of you whom I can see. But I'm also thinking of all those who are tuned in by television or other methods in this vast gathering of priesthood. We are assembled as a mighty body of the priesthood, both here in the conference center and in locations throughout the world. We've heard inspired messages this evening. I think you and I could testify to that. And I express my appreciation to those brethren who have addressed us. I am honored yet humbled by the privilege to speak to you. I pray that the inspiration of the Lord may attend me. Recently, as I watched the news on television, I realized that many of the lead stories were similar in nature and that the tragedies reported all basically traced back to one emotion, anger. The father of an infant had been arrested for physical abuse of the baby. It was alleged that the baby's crying had so infuriated him that he had broken one of the child's limbs and several ribs. Alarming was the report of growing gang violence, with the number of gang-related killings having risen sharply. Another story that night involved the shooting of a woman by her estranged husband, who was reportedly in a jealous rage after finding her with another man. Then, of course, there was the usual coverage of wars and conflicts throughout the world. I thought of the words of the psalmist, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Many years ago, a young couple called my office and asked if they could come in for counseling. They indicated they had suffered a tragedy in their lives and that their marriage was in serious jeopardy. An appointment was arranged. The tension between the husband and the wife was apparent as they entered my office. Their story unfolded slowly at first as the husband spoke haltingly and the wife cried quietly and participated very little in the conversation. The young man had returned from serving a mission and was accepted to a prestigious university in the eastern part of the United States. It was there, in a university ward, that he met his future wife. She was also a student at the university. After a year of dating, they journeyed to Utah and were married in the Salt Lake Temple. Returning east shortly afterward to finish their schooling. By the time they graduated and returned to their home state, they were expecting their first child, and the husband had employment in his chosen field. The wife gave birth to a baby boy. Life was good. When their son was about 18 months old, they decided to take a short vacation to visit family members who lived a few hundred miles away. This was at a time when car seats for children and seat belts for adults were scarcely heard of, let alone used. The three members of the family all rode in the front seat with the toddler in the middle. Sometime during the trip, the husband and wife had a disagreement. After all these years, I cannot recall what caused it, but I do remember that their argument escalated and became so heated that they were eventually yelling at one another. Understandably, this caused their young son to begin crying, which the husband said only added to his anger. Losing total control of his temper, he picked up a toy the child had dropped on the seat and flung it in the direction of his wife. He missed hitting his wife. Instead, the toy struck their son, with the result that he was brain damaged and would be handicapped for the rest of his life. This was one of the most tragic situations I had ever encountered. I counseled and encouraged them. We talked of commitment and responsibility, of acceptance and forgiveness. We spoke of the affection and respect which needed to return to their family. We read words of comfort from the scriptures. 
we prayed together. Though I have not heard from them since that day so long ago, they were smiling through their tears as they left my office. All these years, I have hoped they made the decision to remain together, comforted and blessed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think of them whenever I read the words, Anger doesn't solve anything. It builds nothing. But it can destroy everything. We have all felt anger. It can come when things don't turn out the way we want. It might be a reaction to something which is said of us or to us. We may experience it when people don't behave the way we want them to behave. Perhaps it comes when we have to wait for something longer than we expected. We might feel angry when others can't see things from our perspective. There seems to be countless possible reasons for anger. There are times when we can become upset at imagined hurts or perceived injustices. President Heber J. Grant, seventh president of the Church, told of a time as a young adult when he did some work for a man who then sent him a check for $500 with a letter apologizing for not being able to pay him more. Then President Grant did some work for another man, work which was, he said, ten times more difficult, involving ten times more labor and a great deal more time. This second man sent him a check for $150. Young Heber felt he had been treated most unfairly. He was at first insulted and then incensed. He recounted the experience to an older friend who asked, Did that man intend to insult you? President Grant replied, No. He told my friends he had rewarded me handsomely. To this the older friend replied, A man is a fool who takes an insult that isn't intended. Close quote. The Apostle Paul asked in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 of the Joseph Smith translation, Can ye be angry and not sin? Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. I ask, is it possible to feel the spirit of our Heavenly Father when we are angry? I know of no instance where such would be the case. From 3 Nephi in the Book of Mormon we read, There shall be no disputations among you, for verily, verily, I say unto you, He that hath the spirit of contention is not of me but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another, but this is my doctrine that such things should be done away. To be angry is to yield to the influence of Satan. No one can make us angry. It is our choice. If we desire to have a proper spirit with us at all times, we must choose to refrain from becoming angry.